pleasure to have uh, Prof. Srikant Ayengar from uh, University of Utah. And he will speak to us about, uh, about his interesting connections between representation theory of uh, abelian groups and uh, in modular representation theory of abelian groups and commutative algebra. So, Shikan, you are welcome to begin your talk. Thank you, Jugal. I'm glad to see so many of you here, if only virtually. So, you know, I was, uh, I thought about when Jugal asked me to speak in this series, I was wondering what might be appropriate for this audience because he said it would be nice to have some connection with characteristic P. And then listening to Professor Hunike's talk on uh, Neuther's work and the early work on representation theory of algebras gave me the idea that uh, perhaps it would be interesting to discuss these new connections that have developed uh, between the two subjects. And it's uh, still, there's a lot of ongoing work in this uh, subject, and I thought it'd be interesting to talk about it. So anyway, so my plan is to speak today about something called rank varieties for modules over elementary abelian groups. And uh, I hope by the end of today's talk, you'll, I would have defined most of these words. So this is roughly the plan. So I'll first talk about modular representation, so what it means. And then I'll, you know, I'll tell you why it uh, makes sense to focus on the elementary abelian group case. I will define all these terms. And the third uh, aspect will be something called pi points for elementary abelian groups and then rank varieties. And uh, my idea is that I'll link this to, in the next talk on Friday, I'll link this to the study of modules over complete intersections. At least for me, when I, you know, when, when I learned about the connection between these two, things were much clearer coming from where I am. Okay, so in fact, most of what I have to say today is really, in fact, a lot, there's a lot more, in, it's based on this paper called Varieties and Comology Ring of a Module due to John Carlson. So really, in fact, I'm, I'm only going to be talking about a subset of what is presented here. The only difference is that I'm going to be uh, presenting the material from my own perspectives are coming from commutative algebra and also from the hindsight of almost uh, 40 years. Right? And uh, in, in fact, uh, most of my, I've been, some, some of you know that I've been working on this topic now for many years. And uh, what I present is really what I've learned from my collaborators. And here is John Carlson. Uh, he's still very active. He's turning 80 in a few weeks, but still continues to work vigorously. And then my other collaborators on this topic are, uh, this is Julia Petsova. Well, I'm oh, sorry, the picture isn't so good but you can see the mountains behind. This is Henning Krauser, also by now a long-time collaborator on this. And then of course, as Lucho, many of you know, was my advisor. And we'll be, I'll be talking about his work on Friday. And then this is Dave. So really what I'm presenting today is sort of a, a historical account of the subject from my own perspective and the perspective I've learned from these people. Okay, let's get started. So modular representation. So, uh, so throughout, uh, I'll take G to be G will be a finite group. Think of your favorite group. Soon, the structure of the group will be simpler. Okay, but for now, so G is a finite group, and I'll be looking at representations over a field K. So K will be a field. And it will be arbitrary for the moment. So, okay. And the basic player in this game is something called the group algebra, so which is denoted KG. So this is the group algebra of the group, which as a vector space, the underlying is a K algebra, and the underlying vector space is just spanned by the elements of the group. So this is, uh, and it's with multiplication induced from G. Or inherited from G. Right, so, I mean, I know how to multiply elements from the group, and these are linear combination of elements from the group. So the distributive law tells me how to multiply an arbitrary sum like this. And I'll identify K, 
with the subspace spanned by the identity of the group, which is I denote one. And this is actually a subring of the group algebra. So this is a subring. And so KG is a K algebra. So it's an algebra over a field. So in fact, K is in the center of the group. This K is in the center of KG. And it's a finite dimensional algebra. So the rank of this group algebra as a vector space, I prefer to speak of rank rather than dimension because in commutative algebra, dimension is a loaded term. So the rank is the order of the group and in particular it's finite, right? So as an algebra, K, as an algebra, KG is, uh, is typically non-commutative. In fact, it is commutative as a, a ring. If and only if the, the G is a billion. Okay. So, okay, so it's it's first glance, it's not in the realms of uh, our interests yet, but okay, you'll see. And and what are representations? Representations are nothing but so representations of G. are the same as KG modules. And that's the perspective I'll take. So I won't talk of representations, I'll talk of KG modules. Okay? And so, and in fact, in this talk, I'll be focusing on just finite dimensional representation, finite rank representations or finite dimensional representations. So these are the representations, so finite dimensional Okay, representations. So I'll focus on these. So sitting inside these are the projective modules. So which I'll write proj. These are this is sitting inside mod kg. So these are the projective kg modules. Okay, and in fact, we know we know what the projective modules are, so, or at least in principle. So the Krull-Ri Mark Schmidt theorem tells you it follows from the Krull-Ri Mark Schmidt theorem. In fact, the Krull-Ri Mark Schmidt theorem says that any module can be written as a, any module, meaning finite dimensional module, can be written as a direct sum of indecomposables, and it's such a decomposition is unique up to uh, isomorphism and permutation of factors. But for projectives, it tells you that uh, all indecomposable projectives projectives occur as direct summons of the regular representation. of KG viewed as a module over itself in the usual way. Okay, so this is what people call the regular representation. Okay, so what this implies, and so what this implies in particular, so what it, you know, so you can write KG because of the Kulri Mark Schmidt theorem. You can write KG as sum of, say, PI, EI, and say there are S of them where PI is not isomorphic to PJ, and EI is at least one, the multiplicities. So every projective, so these are the indecomposable projectives. So P1 to PS are up, the isomorphism classes are indecomposable projectives. Okay, now, so here's in, in characteristic zero or, a, or in characteristic of K is zero, I should, I should not put it in parentheses rather, if the characteristic of K is zero or more generally, then the characteristic of K does not divide the order of the group, the, every module is projective. Uh, 
so the group algebra is what's called semi simple so we then can classify at least in principle so we know all the project all the indicate all the representations as i said it's in principle because writing down representations of a finite group is not a trivial matter even in characteristic zero but anyway things like character theory have been developed to study this what i want to focus on is in the case where the characteristic does divide the order of the group so hence for the characteristic of k will be some prime p and p divides the order of the group so this is what's called the modular case okay so that will be the focus of my lectures okay so as obviously so in this case there are typically many more typically many more modules than projective modules and you'll see examples in a bit and so this brings me to the second of the talk namely i want to make a the slogan here is that in this case when you want to look at representation theory in the modular case the the slogan here is that uh, a module uh well, maybe i should say like this the slogan here is that the properties of a module of a kg module are controlled by its restrictions to elementary abelian subgroups so i should explain what i mean here so so this is going to be the slogan for the second part so first of all what is elementary abelian so an elementary abelian subgroup it means a group of elementary abelian group elementary abelian group so i is a group of the form it's a cyclic group of order p but multiple copies of it so these are the element if this is an elementary abelian this is uh, any group of this form is said to be elementary abelian one should to be precise one should say elementary abelian p group to emphasize that it's uh, product of cyclic groups of order p but since a fixed up on p i shall just talk of elementary abelian groups okay so note that this is abelian and c is called the rank of the group okay so this is one word now what about this business of restriction okay so oh first of all i should say that because uh, p divides the order of the group we know that there are they do exist subgroups of g which are elementary abelian so in fact this is from cauchy's theorem so p divides the order of the group so there exists elements of order p and those are those certainly are elementary abelian or p in g and the subgroup the generator set the elementary abelian of rank 1 this is the most typical mod p but typically in fact you'll have subgroups of larger rank and the rank of the the largest rank of a elementary abelian subgroup sitting inside g is an interesting invariant which which will come up later so certainly there are enough elementary abelian subgroups sitting inside g or at least there are elementary abelian subgroups sitting inside g that there are enough of them is not yet clear but uh, it will in a bit okay now what is this business of restriction so for any subgroup 
So let's say we have a subgroup. Then the group algebra of H is naturally a subring of the group algebra of G. And if you take any module M, any KG module, you can restrict it by this inclusion and view it as a module over KH. via restriction. There's also sort of the opposite process where you start with the KH module and you can inflate it up to G, but I won't need that for the moment. So this is the restriction of M to H. Okay. So what the slogan means is that, uh, so the slogan, what it's saying is that M, the properties of M as controlled I mean, this is uh, loosely speaking, of course, controlled by the family. And this is the one of the key points, the family of modules. M restricted to E, where E is elementary medium. So it's not saying that it's enough to uh, Restrict to one specific elementary abelian, you need to have information about uh, all of them and of course, and how they're all related. But roughly speaking, this is what it is. And to sort of illustrate this principle, so here's, an, here's a theorem due to Chui Nad from the 60s actually, much pred predating Carlson's paper. So this, he's, he proved that, in fact, he has a much more general statement. He proved that if you take M in a G module, this is projective. If and only if M restricted to E is projective, keep in mind that this is as a KE module. for all E and G elementary abelian. Okay. So this is Chuinat's theorem. So you can detect projectivity by its restrictions to elementary abelians. You should think of this as some sort of local to global principle. <clears throat> if this is reminding, this should, is reminiscent of local to global principles we see in commutative algebra. Uh, in commutative algebra or algebra geometry. And in fact, there's a much more sophisticated manifestations of this uh, phenomena. And uh, the first one to prove results of that nature, uh, sort of, uh, this is captured in what's called Quillen stratification. I don't think I'll get to this, but anyway, Quillen proved certain results, which told, which sort of makes this point that this is really a local to global statement. And I mean, discussing this will entail talking about cohomology of G and so on. Maybe that's for another occasion. Okay, so this is sort of illustrates what I meant that you can, the properties of a module are detected by its restrictions to properties of M. I should also mention here the result of SER, which when you interpret it, uh, tells you that you can sort of reconstruct M SER and then follow up by, uh, who, this, by John Carlson, who proved that one can reconstruct, again, this is loosely speaking, reconstruct M from this family. Okay, so it's in this sense that uh, the elementary abelians control the representation theory of the of G, at least in the modular case. So that's for that reason, from now on, I'll just drop to element, I'll focus on elementary abelians. So from now on, I 
I'll fix Z. So C is bigger than one. So P is a prime. And remember the characteristic of K is P is positive. And at some point it will become useful for me to assume that K is algebraically closed and I may forget later on. So let me just say it's algebraically closed. Yeah, this is not so important, but it'll some statements I make later will require this hypothesis. All right. So now let's get back to the group algebra. So what does a group algebra look like of an elementary abelian group? So let's suppose you can write so E is elementary abelian, so it has a certain number of generators. In fact, there are C of them. And the relations are that each of them, the pth power of each of them is one. So these are cyclic groups, and of course they commute. So, so G I G J, the commutator is one. These are the relations of the group. So if you look at the group algebra, because it's so it'll be a polynomial ring on these generators, polynomial because the group the elements G commute, modulo these relations. Uh, Srikant? Yeah? There's a question from Professor Kaushik. Is uh, P just the characteristic? Yeah, P is the characteristic of the field. Okay. Uh, this is what I meant here. Uh -huh. P is the characteristic of the field. And in fact, you start with a group of elementary abelian P group, and you're looking at a field of characteristic P. Okay. Yeah, uh, this will be the standing hypothesis throughout. Yeah. Uh, that's what I meant to write here, cat for characteristic. <clears throat> ah. I think I've lost the screen broadcast, uh, have I? Yeah, yes. Okay. Something happened there, all right. Is it back? Not yet. Uh, Ah, yes. Yeah. So P is indeed the characteristic of K, and E is an elementary abelian P group. So the group algebra of E over K is uh, generated as a polynomial ring by these generators G1 to GC. And it's a polynomial ring because the generators commute. And the relations are that uh, uh, GI to the P is 1 for each I between 1 and C. Okay, but for us, it will be convenient to introduce sort of new generators. So let me set Ti to be uh, Gi minus one. So that uh, if you look at the p powers of these generators, because I'm in characteristic p, it will be zero. So these are the Ti's and ill-potent. So Ke then, is in fact just isomorphic to the polynomial ring in C generators modulo the pth powers. So nothing but a truncated polynomial ring. Okay, so the crucial points about this for us is that this is local, so obviously it's commutative. Maybe it's worth stating that again. Commutative, it's local with maximal ideal generated by the T's. And of course, it's even Archimian, right? It's finite dimensional. And most important, it's a complete intersection. And many of the properties one knows about modules of elementary abelian groups springs from this specific property of the ring. I'll and for, I'll bring this up next week uh, on Friday. Right. Okay, so this is what the group algebra looks like. So what are modules over this? What do we mean when we talk of modules? So a module, a KE module, module M is just a K vector space with C operators, which I should write PI again. So the multiplication by Ti is a k-linear map. So these are k-linear maps, k-linear endomorphisms, such that, first of all, they're commuting. So you're looking at a family of commuting endomorphisms. 
such that pi tj for all lan j and the nil protect of order p. So this is what mod what this is what we mean when we look at a module over such a such an algebra. We're just looking at a family of nil potent maps that are commuting, right? So, so okay. So for example, so let's take the simplest cases when you look at uh, ah. So this is maybe okay. So k t over t to the p. So just look at the case of rank one. So I'm just looking at the cyclic group Z mod P. So in this case, one knows of course that the indecomposable modules, indecomposable KE modules are nothing but the cyclic quotients TI for one to P, and there's precisely one in decomposable free module, namely the ring itself. And that also comes out because the ring is local. So I'm not no longer talking of projectives, I just talk of free modules because the ring is local. Is namely KT over T to the P itself. Okay. So, by the way, here's uh, if you take any for any KT module M, remember any means finite dimensional, T module M, you can look at, as I said, you can look at the multiplication by T. So as a linear operator, and because t to the p is zero, so because t to the p is zero, so you can see that the rank of the map, so by which I mean the rank of the image of t, will be less than or equal to p minus one over p times rank of m as a vector space. So you always have this inequality. All right, and equality holds precisely when M is project for free. Equality holds if and only if M is free. So the point I want to make here is that being free is a rank condition. So it's a vanish. It's it's being free is saying that some determinant is non-zero. So being free. a rank condition and can be detected by determinants. You know, it's a determinant of the of the matrix representing the action of T on M. It's just, so if, if M is free, and only if this specific uh, determinant of this specific size is non-zero and can be, and freeness is detected. By the vanishing or non-vanishing of certain determinants. Yeah. You have a question? Uh, Parangama is asking, what was the statement about in decomposable modules? Hang on. Uh, oops, I lost you again. I seem to have lost. I think every time you pose uh, a question, it kicks me out of the. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wait a minute. I don't know why. So what I was saying was, if you look at these, uh, mod this ring KT over T to the P, uh, you know, after all, it's uh, KT is a discrete valuation ring. So we know the indecomposable module. So this is even simpler. I'm just saying that the, the only indecomposable modules over this ring are these cyclic modules. Okay, there are P of them. And there's among these, if you look at them, there's only one module which is free, namely the one corresponding to equal to p yeah okay so that's all i meant all right and uh, freeness can be detected by this rank condition should i go on 
Yeah, uh, she says thanks. Okay. All right. So this is about just the rank one case. And uh, so in rank two, already things get rather complicated, but let me say a little bit. So if you look at rank two, so the second example I want to do is if you look at C mod two, so what's um, it's called the climb four group. So now this it's implicit now that the characteristic is two because I'm looking at two groups. Then the group algebra will be just T1, T2, T1 squared, T2 squared. So already here, I have, there are infinitely many indecomposable modules. So for example, so here's a family for any, take any point A, B, in two space, and you consider the module uh, K is parameterized by this, K, 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 then T1 square, the cyclic module defined by A, uh, AT1 plus PT2. So these are cyclic and hence in decomposable, and these are distinct as long. So actually, it just depends on up to rescaling, you get the same. So you get this gives an infinite family of modules. Family. In fact, you can check that these are two dimensional modules. Uh, two dimensional rank two. I promise not to say dimension of modules of rank two. Okay. Okay, and these are all non isomorphic. If AB is so, if you take distinct points not in affine space but in projective space, is so as long as is not equal to some rescaling of A prime B prime. Okay, so this gives an infinite family. So the whole there's a whole family of modules parameterized by P one. That's what it is. I'll get back to this example later. And it turns out actually that for any given dimension, okay, I'm going to start using the word dimension for the modules. For any given dimension, there's an infinite family of modules of that dimension, non-isomorphic, of course. So this module, this ring is what is called of uh, tame type. At, at least, although the modules are infinite, you can at least write down what they are. But if you go beyond rank two, then things go all right. So if you look at uh, z equal to z mod pz, c where p is bigger than three, or c is three, then the representation theory is wild in a technical sense. The model. Okay. So it's no longer reasonable to write down, to try to write down all the modules over such rings, over such algebras. Okay, so one needs different methods to understand this. So this gives me, gets me now to the sort of the third point. Right? So the idea that, uh, that Carlson had and was to try and study uh, modules over KE. Remember KE is this group algebra, the truncated polynomial ring, by looking at restrictions to subrings of this, no, lo no longer so just subgroups, but subrings of KE. To explain what I mean, I'm going to borrow some modern terminology to explain this. So let, let alpha from K, look at the ring KT over T to the P to KE. So let this be a K algebra map. So map of K algebras. So to specify this, you just sort of, you just have to specify the image of T. So you're just picking out some element of uh, KE. By the way, note that uh, any element, any non-unit element of KE, if you take any X in, I should maybe, okay, maybe I should not use the word X, take any element any non-unit in KE, his pth power is zero.
is nil potent of order p. Right? Again, because we are in characteristic p. And the teeth powers of the variables are zero. So specifying such a map is just tantamount to picking out one element of k. Any element will have teeth power zero, so it defines a map like this. So such a map of k algebras is a pi point. So this is due to this language is from Eric Friedlander and that's over. So alpha is a pi point. If alpha is flat as a map. So IE KE is uh, it's flat as a module over flat, equivalently free as a module over kt over t to the p. Okay, so if you take a pi point, you can then, so alpha, then the image of, so image of alpha, is then a subring of Ke. Of course, it's always a subring, but in this case, this, uh, because its image of alpha is isomorphic to Kt over T to the P, this is like the group algebra of a cyclic group of order one. It's isomorphic to, to a group algebra of rank one, of a cyclic group of rank one. Okay, so really what a pi point is doing is picking out various subalgebras of Ke that are group algebras of cyclic groups of rank one. For this reason, they are called cyclic shifted subgroups. The word shifted is, said, is, said, is there to remind us that this subalgebra did not come from E. So, Need not be need not be generated by elements of E. Yeah, so it need not come from. If, of course, if you take a subgroup of E, a cyclic subgroup of E, that will give you a cyc cyclic shifted subgroup. But there are many more. So that's why this is called okay. So this is what a pi point is. So let me introduce one more terminology. So maybe before I do that, here's an exercise or a fact that's uh, not so hard to see. Uh, if you're given a K algebra map to K E, a K algebra map, this is a pi point. If and only if alpha T, the image of T, is not in the square of the maximal ideal. So it's really, so alpha t is of the form a1 t1 plus ac tc plus higher order terms, where these ti are non zero, the a1 to ac is non zero. As a tuple, so, one, so at least one of the components should be non zero. So being a pi point is tantamount to picking up uh, basically a linear form in the algebra Ke. Okay. Okay. And so the notation I want to use is uh, if you're given, if you take M to be a Ke module, then I'll write alpha plus star M for M viewed as module over kt over t to the p via alpha. I mean, to be consistent with the other notation, I should have just used m restricted via alpha. Just to remind you that it's, you're thinking of m as a module over kt over t to the p. So maybe I'll do that from, I'll, I will write it like this. Although the, in the literature, this is the notation you'll see, but this is also suggested. All right. 
So let me just summarize. So what we're doing is you look, we have this group algebra. And so in summary, so we have this group algebra KE and you're looking at the, a pi point is nothing but a map of, of the map of K algebras that is flat, flat map. Okay. And the interest in these is because of what's called dates lemma proved in the seventies that if you take M to be a KE module, then M is projective or equivalently free. If and only if M restricted, this is free for all pi points alpha. Okay. So this, so what it's uh, dates am I saying is that you can detect projectivity at least of a mod KE module by restricting to cyclic shifted subgroups. That's typically how it's stated. I, I hope you notice that the formulation is very similar to Chu in Arndt's theorem, which allowed us to go from general groups to elementary abelian groups. Dates lemma allows you to go from a general elementary abelian group to a group of rank one. And the remarkable thing is that, uh, you know, the point is that over a cyclic group of rank one, you can detect freeness using determinants. It's a rank condition on certain matrices. Yeah, so it becomes completely a problem of linear algebra. Anyway, so this is Gates lemma, and I will bring, discuss this again next on Friday. But based on this, so now I can talk about Carlson's rank variety. So Carlson's rank variety of M. So I'm going to focus on a specific uh, pi points for any for any tuple to AC in its uh, on the affine space. Consider the pi point. to Ke where you're sending, or oh, of course I don't want it to be zero. I send it to just this linear form, just the linear combination of the TRs. So this is a pi point. Again, because this is non-zero, okay? And, uh, there are, there's a result which tells you that you can you only need to focus on this. Again, I'll leave that for later. So now, uh, the rank variety of M, so which is denoted this, is by definition, you look at all pi points. So you're looking at points in affine space such that when you restrict M to this cyclic shifted subgroup, this is not free, okay? So you're looking at all pi points such that when you restrict M along that pi point, the module is not free. So this is, and you, I have to throw in uh, the, you know, uh, the zero point. So what it is is that, so the main result here is that this, there are two things, so this is as closed subset. So this is enough, a closed subset of AC. In fact, it's an affine cone. You can see easily that replacing A by a scalar multiple doesn't change, it doesn't change the map. You're just rescaling it, choosing different generators for E. So being free or not doesn't depend up, up to scaling on A. So this is actually an affine code. And this is not hard to see because it's given by the vanishing of certain matrices. And I'll do some examples that it will become clear then. And the second thing, and this is just Dates lemma. This is zero if and only if M is protected or free as a KE module, right? 
So I should just comment that one is the both. This is your state's lemma, and one is clear because it's a uh, rank condition. Because one holds because freeness over k t over t to the p is a rank condition. Okay, so this is Carlson's rank variety. So let me, in fact, spend the next few minutes doing a couple of examples. More questions, Jantin? Uh, none as of now. Okay. So ah, there is a question. Karen Goma wants to ask something. Uh, can I ask, like, uh, instead of writing? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so, uh, all pi points, uh, uh, those look like as uh, this a alpha type, yeah. alpha a type. Uh, yeah. So what? I, so the, of course, you know, there are typically also some higher order terms, but uh, I'll bring this up later. It turns out that it does, you can uh, for detecting freeness, you can replace any pi point by an equivalent pi point, which is of this form. Okay. Oh, okay. Why don't? Okay. Why don't I just say? It? Because it's a re, it's a good it's an important point. By the definition, it is free if it is not in square, right? Uh, yes. Something so, is in there. Uh, can you replace? Okay, I'll write it here. Let me, why don't I just make the statement? So, okay. so let's say. So this is a theorem again due to Carlson. Okay, let me set it up. So take any pi point. So alpha from. Will be any pi point. Okay, so we know that therefore, so you can write it. There exists then there exists unique. There exists an a which is not zero, and this is uniquely defined such that alpha of t is some linear combination is this specific linear combination of the linear forms plus higher order terms. Meaning terms in the square of max maximal i. All right. So then, of course, associated to it, you also have the pi point alpha a. So we have alpha and we have also alpha a, where you can look at the pi point where you throw away these higher order terms. And what Carlson proved is that M restricted to alpha is free if and only if M restricted to alpha A is free. Okay, so when you are looking at these varieties or you're looking at Date's lemma, you don't have to worry about the high, you can, you don't have to look at all pi points. You just look at quote unquote standard pi points, the ones defined by pure linear forms. Okay. In fact, that's what I'll be doing implicitly. I hope that answers the question. So, so the exam. So the, here's an example. So let's go start with this Klein four group. So we're looking at K e, which is K T one T two over T one square T two square. So the characteristic of K is two. All right. And now I want to look at a, a two dimensional module. So M of rank two. Okay, the same thing happened again. Jayanthan, can you see what I'm writing now? No, 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 no. Uh, okay, now we're coming back. Okay, I yeah, don't know it where just... it stopped. So... <laughs> no, no, it, it, just, it, it just went for a couple of seconds, not more than that. So I'm just hmm. looking at this uh, uh, this elementary abelian group of rank two, and I'm looking at a module, a two-dimensional module. Okay, and to specify the module, I just have to tell you how T1 and T2 acts on M. So T1 will act. Uh, so I want to fix uh, a lambda in K, which is non-zero. I oh, know it can actually be zero as well. That doesn't matter. Take any scalar. So look at the module whose 
which is defined by this action. So T1 is this, and T2 will be acting via lambda. You can check that both are square zero, and also a T1, T2 is T2, T1. In fact, they're both zero, but the main point is that you have to commute, okay? So this is a two-dimensional representation of over the cut line flow group. So what is the variety of this representation? So what is, how do I figure out the variety? Well, I'm supposed to take, uh, so let's look at A1, A2. So in fact, now let me, took a, uh, let me look at the generic linear form. In KE, so X1, T1 plus X2, T2. So how does this act on M? this act on M? So this will act via the matrix. So if you can see the matrices here, so it'll act as x1 plus x2 lambda. So this is the action on M. It's given by this. Now when you restrict it to the pi point defined by uh, x1, x2. So let me put it like this. So alpha x. Uh, I'll, oh, so M restricted to X, M restricted to the pi point defined by X is the two dimensional vector space with action given by this matrix. So it's a two dimensional K space with action defined by that matrix. Okay, so I remember uh, the rank condition. So this will be free and or, or not free if and only if the rank of this action, so the rank of the matrix should be less than, strictly less than. So I, this was something I mentioned before. So two minus one over two times the rank of M. So basically it should be less than half the rank of M. So this is always the case in characteristic two, by the way. So you're looking for, uh, you're looking for the condition that the rank drops by more than half, but here rank of M is two. So this is half times two is one. So I really want the rank to be less than one, which means that we only know this, the data, one by one determinant should be zero. So this happens precisely when this is zero. So the variety of M, M lambda, this is what it was, is this line uh, consisting of uh, lambda and one. The, the variety of this just this point, right? So this is what it is. So I should have taken a, yeah, this is what you get. So of course you can take any scalar multiple of this. So A and K. So in P1, if you look at the homogenization, so you're just looking at one point lambda one. So the variety is just a single point. If you think of it, the variety as a subset of the projective space. So this, or by the way, this tells you in particular that for different lambda, you get different modules. So this is the rank variety of M lambda. So I, I intended to do one more example, but maybe I'll leave it uh, as a exercise and, and I can tell you the or we can begin with it next time. So here's the here's the example. So I could actually write it down. So you look at uh, so you look at so you look at the elementary abelian group of rank three of rank R three over field of characteristic three. So now the characteristic of K is three. And I want to look at the vector space. Oh no, this is actually, I want to look at uh, two. So this is a group of order eight. Two Z, so I do want to look at characteristic two step. And I want to look at a four dimensional representation and it will depend on certain parameters. So M, the four dimensional representation 
defined by the, I have to define three matrices. So I look at zero, zero, uh, one, zero, 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 one. So this is T1. So this is T, then T2 will be zero, zero, and you pick some parameters, say A0, 0B, and T3 will be, so the action of the third variable will be, oh, C, so for some fixed, A, B, C, three space. So now compute, uh, figure, see what the variety of, uh, rank variety of this is. You should see that it's going to be a hypersurface defined by these three numbers, uh, A, B, and C. Okay, so I know you get another infinite family. So maybe to wind up, I should say, I mean, you can ask, what information, so the kind of questions you might be interested in is what information does, what sort of information does the rank variety possess about M? Does the R capture? And this is a, yeah. So here's a, maybe I should just mention a couple of results. So again, this is due to Carlson. So that if M is in decomposable as a representation, this implies that uh, its variety is connected for the projectivization though. So, uh, so let me view the rank, so this viewed in, maybe I should write it the closure, this viewed in PC minus one is connected in the Sariski topology. So, if, so the way to read it is if the variety is connected, if this uh, rank variety is con if this is in decomposable, the variety must be connected. So this knows at least about in decomposability in this, in this way. And another important result, also due to Carlson is the following, and I'll stop with this, that, you know, so far I've just ignored the fact that I'm working with, uh, that this ring that I was looking at came from a group. Now, because we are a group, there are there's tensor products, so you can sense if you if you take M and N to be Ke modules, then M tensor N not over Ke but over K is also a Ke module with the diagonal E action. So let me now say it in terms of the general action in terms of the generators of the group. So where G M tensor M is G M tensor G M. So where G is in E, you can translate it to an action in terms of the algebra, but this is what it is easy. It's easier to state for the group. So this is special about this. Uh, this is what is special about club complete intersections coming from group theory that they actually have a co-product. So they are actually Hopf algebras, finite dimensional Hopf algebras. Then Carlson proved that the variety of the tensor product is just the intersection of the varieties. Okay. So using this, you can, sh you can show that uh, as a corollary and I will discuss this for the next time. As a corollary, you see that any subset of the projective space, let me skip to the projective space now, can be realized as the rank variety of a representation. Representation. 
you know as an exercise as you know i can recommend that you think about this in this specific case where you look at this uh, uh, group group of order 8 elementary abelian group of order 8 and if you compute the variety of this you'll see that you pick up hypersurfaces in t2 and once you have hypersurfaces you can use the tensor product theorem here to cook up any variety so at least over uh, so you can demonstrate this you can prove this for prove this directly so using carlson's result for z mod 2z group of order eight you can do this but once you know you can realize hypersurfaces you can write any subset of p2 or any or any projective space as an intersection of hypersurfaces and then this carlson's theorem tells you these are all realizable so i'll say more about what these variety what uh, what it what sort of information the variety captures in on friday i should stop now i've gone on for long enough any questions yeah Yeah, now audience can ask questions by opening their mic. Uh, may I ask a question? Sure, of course. Uh, thank you for uh, your nice lecture. Uh, in the beginning, you said that uh, a module M over KG is uh, projective if and only if its restriction to yes. the abelian subgroups are. Yes. Uh, projective. Is the same result holds for injectivity or some other properties? Uh, so the thing is, you know, KG is a Frobenius algebra. So. Uh, ah, yes, projective yeah. and injectivity are equal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how about the decomposability? Oh no, that you can't, right? No, because uh, uh, not quite. Because it's a KT over. No, uh, that won't be true. That won't be true. That cannot. Thank you. No. Can you repeat the statement about indecomposability of M implies the connected subset of the project? Ah, yeah. so what calls here? Here's the result due to Carlson. He said that if M is indecomposable, uh, mm -hmm. then the, this, the, uh, the variety must be connected. So to put it in the other way, put it another way. If you can write, so if you can write the projectivization, otherwise you have to be a bit careful because zero is always in any rank variety, right? So that's why we have to look at the. It's easier to make the statement for the projectivization. So maybe I should write it as proj. Then it's less ambiguous. If, if you can write the proj of the rank variety, ah, uh, it's lost it again. Hang on. Can you see now? No. Yeah. Not yet. No. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. If you can write it like this, if you can decompose it, if the disjoint union of two uh, x and y closed subsets and P C minus one, then M can be written as uh, uh, oh, I should have written uh, wrote M prime plus M second, where the variety the rank variety of m prime is x and the rank variety of m second is y so this is what carlson theorem says if you can decompose the variety you can decompose the module so and the uh, cannot be true no huh? no okay continue yeah, you cannot expect the converse to be true because you can take m plus m and that will have the same variety as uh, sort of, uh, the converse doesn't hold. Because the, the variety of m plus m is the same as the variety of m. Right, so you don't expect to be able to pick up uh, 
detecting decomposability of uh, decomposability or indecomposability, but one direction is correct. But then you said that uh, any uh, subset, uh, where is that statement? That corollary, any subset of P C minus one yes, yes. can be think uh, of as a uh, rank variety of a representation. Correct. Uh, In fact, you can you can even choose it to be decomposable. Or oh, any closed subset, of course. And I should then have to take irreducible. But here, any closed subset. And projectivization of that, right? Rank variety. Correct, correct, correct. That's the projectivization of the rank variety. Correct. Of course, you know, for this statement, you can just as well work IR. Ah, because you only get affine, you only get affine cones. You're better off working over the projective. The statement is correct over the projective variety. Yeah, not rank, not the uh, fine version. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. So the other properties of varieties, like suppose you get smooth variety, does it say something about the representation? Ah, that's actually very interesting. Uh, so. So you can ask. Uh, so there are, yeah. So you can ask what, as I said, you know, the basic question is what the variety says about uh, representation and vice versa. And sort of maybe the, I don't know the answer for smooth thing. I don't know that there is a clean answer there. But if one does, uh, mm -hmm. one can ask. So there are, for example, you can ask what does it mean that mean that two representations same the same variety. For different M and N, and this uh, basically uh, there's a, this is again due to uh, Benson, Carlson, and Ricard. They proved that so this is from '92. They proved that if the two things have the same variety, then one can sort of reconstruct one from the other. You can construct uh, M from M. And vice versa, using uh, you know taking syzygies of uh, syzygies, right? So taking so syzygies and uh, direct sums, finite direct sums, and direct summands, and most important extensions. So I didn't talk, I didn't say anything about how so the rank variety behaves. For example, if you have a exact sequence in time m and second, uh, then the rank variety of uh, m is contained in the union of the rank varieties of the other two. So things like that. So so what they say is that is contained in the rank variety of m union the rank variety of m second. So just like if you had, uh, if you look at the modules over a commutative ring, if you have an exact sequence of modules, the support of one of the modules has contained the union of the supports of the other. So such statements hold also for rank varieties. And what Benson Carlson proved is that basically, uh, if two modules have the same varieties, you can get from one to the other using syzygies, direct sums, summands, and such extensions. So, hmm. but still, there are interesting questions. So, I said, for example, that you can realize any closed subset of PC minus one, but one doesn't know if you can re realize closed subschemes. I think that that's actually not true. Not every subscheme can be realized. You need some multiplicity. And what sort of restrictions there are on the scheme structure of varieties that come from representations is not yet clear. Okay. So there, there's a question from A.J. Parmeshwaran. Uh, Parmeshwaran, can you ask your question? Uh, is it typed up? Is it, is it yeah, typed? yeah, yeah. Hello? 
Yeah, is it okay? Yeah. Is it audible? Yeah. Yes. Now I was just asking whether these subgroups that you consider are unipotent subgroups of GLE, or maybe I'm even the whole representation goes in the unipotent group. Yeah, I'm just looking at elementary abelian groups. So these are already unipotent. So if I wanted to do more general uh, finite group schemes, then one has to look at these unipotent subgroups. So, but I'm just looking at the finite groups and elementary abelian subgroups. So that's already, uh, I mean, the group ring of the KE is already local. Yeah, but it's, they're, they're unipotent, right? Not the toral. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at just unipotent things. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Sure. So maybe sure. I should say that you know the uh, I to, I when I, I presented this reduction to the elementary abelian as a two-step process: one going from a group to It's elementary abelian groups, and then from elementary abelian groups to shifted subgroups. But in fact, the modern approach to this subject, and this is due to Friedlander and Petzova, takes just uh, uh, and Petzova. The one that's pioneered by them is just to look at all flat maps from K T over C to the P to K G flat. Or G any finite group, or even finite group scheme. Oh, but in this case, you have to put some condition that the image lies in a unipotent uh, subgroup scheme of G. Uh, but some restrictions. So one can actually develop the theory in one shot without having to do this two-step reduction to elementary abelians. You can talk of five points of finite groups, and then you can talk of defining varieties for five points. This is a bit more complicated, but you can then talk of defining varieties for arbitrary finite groups. I only did it for uh, finite group schemes, but you can do rank varieties for arbitrary. Uh, sorry, I only did it for elementary abelian, but one can introduce rank varieties for any group. For any such sheet, not just elementary abelian. So that's sort of the modern approach to the subject. But in a in a very in a very precise technical sense, the most of the action is hap happening over the elementary abelian groups. Yeah, we have a question from uh, Dipan Prashad. Uh, Dipan, sure. can you can you uh, ask your question? Uh, Dipendra, can you ask your question? Well, uh, comment. He has a comment. Ah, okay, okay, wait. I don't, okay, let me yeah. see the comment. Yeah, any any uh, p group in GLNFP is unipotent. Silo theory. Yeah. So if you're looking at finite groups, it's not an issue. It's only when you go to group schemes, finite group schemes, that you have to put these additional restrictions that the image is in a unipotent subgroup of G. Yeah. 